welcome back. Today, Autumn and I are on a road trip and we're gonna be doing something that I haven't personally done in over 25 years. And uh, we're on a road trip and I will explain a little bit more when we get there, but we're gonna enjoy this uh, scenic windy roads and uh, about a half hour, 45 minute drive here. And we'll be getting to our destination and I will explain a little bit more about what we're doing and why we're doing it. So today's kind of an exciting day and uh, we'll see you when we get there. So what would a guy that owns a Ford be doing at a GM dealership? Well, I'm here today with Troy Donovan, and uh, I've got my 2018 red Ford Raptor with uh, 17,000 miles on it. I've decided that it's time to trade the thing in. And I have always uh, owned GMC or Chevy. This was my very first Ford, and I've decided that I'd like to go back to the GMC. So what I've done is purchased a uh, GMC AT4 6.2 liter V8 and the Ford was a uh, V6 twin turbo and I don't know if any of you guys know what the Ford Raptor is but it's a performance truck off-road truck uh, it's never seen the off-road though so today I've asked Troy to uh, maybe kind of go over some of the comfort features of these trucks um if you guys want to see what the specs are and all that you can get online and check them out yourself but this is a 2024 and it is the v8 and i guess one of the nicest things that i like about it is when you do that cold start on this truck boy does that sound good yeah it sounds real good um so with the uh 6.2 liter v8 on this one um you have a little bit of different exhaust uh, they also come in a diesel variant you know 30 diesel but uh, this uh, exclusive exhaust is exclusive to the 6.2. Yeah. Um, but with these AT4s, um, basically they got a two inch lift in them. Uh, you get these bigger uh, Goodyear Wrangler. They're like a big old dirt track tire. So you can see it a little bit meatier than what yep. you typically see on most. Um, but the two inch factory lift um, is part of the AT4 package. Um, so this is very similar in a lot of ways to the Chevy Trail Boss package, but AT4s are pretty uh, fancied up, pretty gussied up, a lot of equipment. Um, they come standard leather interior. Um, so where like Chevy Trail Bosses, you can get leather, but a lot of the structures are uh, cloth. So a little bit of difference, but it's similar in certain ways with that two inch lift and things like that. Uh, if you wonder what uh, AT4 stands for, that's all terrain for. Um, that's what the AT is all about. This is the 1500, not the 2500. Yes, yeah. A lot of times people think it's uh, with the truck, the way it's lifted in the air, a lot of people when they sit on the lot, they think they're a three quarter ton truck, but these are a half ton truck. But oftentimes if you put them side by side to a three quarter ton, the height is not all that different, but a two inch lift really kicks you up in the air. The other nice thing is if you kind of hit this bottom button, kind of hold it with your hand, and as it's sitting there, then hit the top button, It'll flip down this nice little step here for you. Stick your fingers in there, fold that down. Then you can get your big old hand cane out there. So you can make this a seat right here, sit in it, change your boots, anything you got. When this tailgate first came out, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how many times I've heard of people have destroyed their tailgate. I guess the most important thing is, is if you guys are uh, ever leaving the hitch in and you have one of these particular tailgates, I've heard of horror stories where they've dropped that tailgate down and crushed it into yep. the, the ball hitch yeah, so on you that. Gotta be careful doing that. I don't know if you noticed down here, but there's a 400 watt power inverter inside the bed that you can run up to a 400 watt item. So say you had like a corded circular saw and you were crazy enough, you could put a board here, saw the board. Something that Troy was just explaining is it's got your seven pin round connector here. 
Uh, these trucks no longer have the four pin on them. You've, you've, I've got an adapter for that to convert it to my smaller trailer. But it's also got two jacks here for a rear camera that you can hook up to your trailer. And you were explaining to me that you can either put it on the back of the trailer or in the trailer, I yeah. guess. So, so like a cargo trailer inside, have a motorcycle. You got that thing strapped down on a cargo trailer. You're worried about that shifting inside your trailer. Get that camera and buy it through any GM parts department. It'll integrate with the radios inside the truck. You know, so that way you don't have to worry about your cargo inside if it's shifting around. A couple things I like to hit on in the back here. Not that most drivers spend a ton of time in the back, but some nice things. You have these nice uh, seat back pockets and they're built into both sides. You can put like, you know, some jumper cables, rope, um, anything you want to store away nicely, you can put right there in the middle. Now the AT4 has these carpeted insert ones. This is a removable piece of carpet. It'll snap out. So for winter time, if you don't want to keep this piece of carpet and these inserts, which I particularly probably wouldn't if it were my truck, because we get sloppy crappy roads here, in winter and then uh back, this does have rear heated seats for your uh outboard passengers in the back so they're heated and, and ventilated in the front for the driver and the front passenger but here in the rear they are heated for your people in the back yeah. these are quite big um i've seen very tall people sit in the back of these um so you can kind of see that they scoop the head out so you can be almost an axis of six foot five not have your knees hit have your head sit in the back of this truck And I will have to say that uh, the sound of that V8 sure is pretty nice. Uh, throw the uh, power button down here. You can power fold those mirrors on the outside. And those are very helpful if you go to the drive through bank, any of those kind of things. Or my mailbox. Kind of some bigger changes, like the parking brake is now electronic. You know, there's no more pedal that we hit to set our parking brake. So in order to set our parking brake foot on the brake, we hit the little P here and it'll say parking brake set on our driver information center there. Or to release it, foot on the brake, hit the P again. That'll release the parking brake. And this is also where you have your mode selector to put you into the different drive modes, which you'll see there's normal, and then there's sport. And I don't know if you could kind of hear it, Doug, but you hear how that, that active exhaust changes. So this is kind of a new thing for 24 that we didn't have on 20, basically 2020 models to 23 models um, is that exhaust. It used to be when you would change this to the different modes, it was, it's still changing the shift points in your transmission. So you have different shift points from being in normal mode to sport mode, and then also to off-road mode, okay? So those different modes give us different shift points in this transmission that give us optima, uh, optimal performance. But you'll also hear how it changes that that active exhaust in the back. I don't think on camera you guys can hear that, but uh, you can, you can when he goes from normal to uh, sport mode on mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you can actually hear that inside Rumble the more. cab here. Yeah. yeah, and it's got a, a little bit throatier, deeper sound. Mm -hmm. And that's probably one of the nicest things about a V8 is mm -hmm. the sound that they produce. Some people like the loud exhaust, some people don't, but I think when you're buying this particular model truck like this, I think more people are going to be into it and not than not into it. So I have to agree. I yeah. kind of when I took it for the test drive and we went down the road there, the just the, the throatiness sound of that thing going down the road sounded pretty good. Just another thing to hit on. This is where if you are towing, this is where your electric brake resides. Trucks that's in, that's yeah. nice because it's right there, easy to. Uh, yeah, they did a great study that they uh, actually found that most people are right-handed, um, so they moved it to this position. I know in my uh, my Ford over there. It was down up under mm -hmm. here, and it was kind of difficult to get to, and there's... Some of our old models, they used to be over here. They used to be on the left-hand side. They always kind of uh, were over here. Um, but, uh, so this is where you set your gain output. You know, if you're hauling a trailer with an electric brake system, you'll see how the gain output changes if I hit the plus or minus. Now, this is a new shifter um, that we've kind of come out with. Uh, on the Now, you get the shifter with bucket seat configurations of GM trucks. Um, now on an AT4, you get the shifter and bucket seats. There's not a uh, bench seat configurant. Now you also get this wireless charging pad for your phone in there. So that's where your phone has got wireless charging capabilities will reside. You can see a little bit better there. You also have a little another little inverter. Tray comes removed. There's some USB ports. And you know, that actually kind of makes it nice that you can just lay your phone here while you're driving as well. So if you throw your phone there, I'll throw mine there, um, you'll see 
Um, like up here, this little green lightning bolt will I'll come on, and you can see my phone there itself also got the green. Oh, yeah, it's good. And pull that off there real charger. quick. Yep. So you see, if I take my phone out, that'll go back out. No, no lightning bolt means no phone. I know in my in my Ford over there, I had to have a cord that was running down across the center console there to to be charging the phone. So this shifter's kind of new. This is where you would go to park. You'd hit this letter P. Um, some people get a little intimidated by this shifter because it is a little bit newer. Um, you know, a lot of people are used to the old shift up here. If you want to go to drive, just go right back. It'll go to D. You're in drive. P for park. Now, if we want to go to reverse, we would just go forward. So there's reverse, and you'll see all the different camera views that have come up on the uh, truck. So we can of course put this accordingly to what view we might want thing this has is it also has the front camera similar to the the ford that i have and that's kind of nice especially for a guy with one eye that has no depth perception i can hit that front camera view as i'm pulling into a parking spot let's say there's a cement barrier out front there and i don't want to bump the front bumper on it i can call up that front camera so that is a nice feature on these this truck here as and well it, and these camera views are very nice so if you want to hook up your trailer you know that's where your ball hitch would be yeah um you know so there's always kind of all these nice little different views that you can check out it's also kind of a fun little feature um when you're towing because you put it and drive it down the road you get your trailer behind you see if it's swaying maybe you didn't get a strap down some other new things here this is, of course, a whole new radio um, that kind of came out a couple years. I guess it's on year number two now, I think, for the half ton. I think uh, I think it was 22, 23, so maybe it's on to his third year now for the, the Google radio. This is a lot like a tablet. You know, you just kind of flip this back, flip it forward. Uh, Google News, Amazon Alexa, but you can make this drive up with the Amazon Alexa in your house. So if you want to have your lights on at your house, you can hit this and have her work with that and you know turn your lights on before you get home things like that google maps okay so um these come standard on pretty much all the google radios right now um so but there's one key thing that i need to mention about this is um this requires a data plan now depending on what package truck you get and what you uh acquire uh, through onstar they do give you uh, three, at least three uh, free gigabytes of data for at least one month. So you need to have that data plan in order to have the built-in navigation work. Now, you can also have, you know, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, depending on what type of phone you have. I have Apple. So you could use those um, Google-based maps through Apple. It will appear through your Apple CarPlay on about this size of the screen, from about here over. Uh, Doug here got uh, three years of the mobile app usage um, to unlock and remote start his truck for the next three years on his phone. So he can unlock it, lock it, um, and most all the trucks you get at least one month of that for free. But depending what package you uh, you buy, you can receive up to three years possible. Going back here with this Google radio, it's got the uh, Google built in. So I can say, hey Google, Turn the temperature of the truck to 75 degrees. All right. Changing and, and you'll see down here that the, that the temperatures went to 75 degrees. So you can also use that to have her tuned to a certain radio station, things of that nature as well too. So if you tell the address it wants to go, you need to have a data plan. Okay. okay. So if you don't have the data, the data runs out, well, no, no more hey Google stuff for you. Well, other little things on the second page, you have a trailering app, you have the climate, uh, digital climate control. If you want to run the climate control digitally, if hitting buttons is far too sophisticated for you, um, you can bring it up digitally. The trailering uh, is pretty cool. So we can store trailers on here. So if you have multiple trailers, you can uh, start your, put. you know, if you have a cargo trailer, just a normal, you know, uh, aluminum trailer, maybe you just have a utility trailer, maybe you have a camper. We can store them all here. And once you store your trailer, you can do a lot of neat things. You can do a checklist to make sure that everything's like you did the safety chains, that you hooked up the wiring. Um, probably the nicest thing about it is what they call the trailer light test. Now the trailer light test, when you start that, um, it'll do your right turn signal, left turn signal, four way flashers, backups, all the things that you would check um, before going out on the road with your trailer. 
Now, the nice thing about that is you do not have to have, um, you know, the missus or whoever come out and help you do the okay, okay, or you don't have to make the 1500 trips back and forth from the front of the truck to do the So, controls. what you're saying, I guess I wasn't aware of that. But what mm -hmm. you're saying is when you do that trailer light test, mm -hmm. you hit the button and somehow it it recognizes that those particular lights worked. Correct. And it does somewhat of a scan, if yeah, you will. Yeah, it's a, if something fails or doesn't go, it'll let you know that it couldn't like basically make that connection. Or you can go back and watch. You can start to you know start it and then make one trip back and, and watch it. And um, it'll actually sequence it while you're standing back. Right, I'm kind of like a paranoid person, so if I start one, I like to go back and like still watch it, and even though like this, the, usually the radio will say if something didn't jack. Settings is if you want to change certain things on the truck. Um, so this one that says vehicle here, there's rear seat reminder, which which if you don't shut off rear seat reminder every time you leave the truck, it's gonna go ding, ding, like check back seat, um, which you have the ability to shut that off. A lot of people typically shut this one off too, which is known as buckle to drive. Um, this is a very good idea because you should wear your seatbelt when you drive, but I understand, you know, hey, if I want to move my truck three feet in my driveway to let my um, wife go to the store to move her car because because I'm blocking her end. I do. Do I really need to put my seatbelt to move the truck ten feet? No, probably not. But when I was back in the truck in the spot, Doug was sitting behind me, and it actually picked him up on this rear pedestrian alert. And if you're in reverse and rear pedestrian alert, when you're backing up, you basically you'll see a picture of a person, and it's kind of warning you that somebody is in within your sensors range, like a a little child or an adult or whoever if you should you happen know. to miss it in the camera you mean yeah so yeah so <laughs> okay. you, you'll actually yeah if you were standing behind it would come on and do this beep 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 and you'll see like a a, a a triangle with an exclamation point with a person in it letting you know that someone's in it's detecting a person behind you not just a object now if you kind of see here there's a glove box there that you can hit that button and then another one there as well there is a in case you would ever run out of fuel, you can put that to release the filler neck in the gas tank to fill it up with a gas can. Hey Google, set my temperature at 70 degrees. Sure, changing the temperature for the driver to 70 degrees. I did that because it's getting warm in here. <laughs> it's getting a little hot. We're back on the shifter. If you're ever in the low gear, you'll see that there's this plus and minus. These are your paddle shifters that allow you to shift up and down through the gears okay so you have to be selected yes, in low, low gear correct. to utilize the paddle mm -hmm. shifter now this little button here i always tell people this isn't a button that you want lit up yellow because the problem is if that button's lit up yellow and i go to open this driver door you see no interior lights came on that's no good so shut yellow light off um open the door and then you have LED lights that'll activate and come on. If I shut my door, they're gonna go back out. Now, for some of you guys that might wanna be incognito, maybe you hunt or do something like that, you might wanna shut that button off because maybe you don't wanna scare the wildlife in the field or something and you wanna be in the dark, then you might wanna deactivate that button. You can deactivate your auto lights and run in pitch black, you know, for those people that also do ah, that, okay. that hunting thing. <clears throat> I like to tell the hunters of the world these certain things because sometimes, you don't want to scare you're trying to drive back a long lane you don't want to make and be all that visible all right so at the start of this video i said i was going to do something that i haven't done for 25 plus years and what i was talking about there is every pickup truck i've purchased over the last 26 27 years has always been red i've never steered away from it i've always picked the red one it's just was kind of a signature move i did and what I do here, I purchased the uh, titanium rush uh, metallic, but it's a popular color choice. A lot of people like this color. Some of these AT4s are uh, color exclusive. You can get a red on this, but not particularly red like his F-150 here. No bright fire engine red yeah. on, on, a, on, an, on an AT4. And that's kind of why I elected not to do that is to, because I couldn't get the bright red. That's why I went with this color. I want to thank right. Troy here. Appreciate it, Thank you for the business. Thank Troy at Donovan and Bauer Auto Group here and uh, for going over everything Absolutely. in the truck. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you. And All right. we'll see you again sometime soon. All right. Thanks, Doug. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, microphone on the trailer hitch between the two exhaust pipes of this and give you a little bit of an idea what it sounds like going up and down the driveway. Granted, it's going to be a little raspier than what it sounds like in uh, real life, but 
Uh, one of the big things that I really liked about this is when you put this in sport mode, it is just like an exhaust bypass. Matter of fact, I think that's exactly what it is. And they call it uh, active exhaust on these. But uh, we'll put that in sport mode, take it up and down the driveway, and you can hear how, uh, how good this thing actually sounds. Granted, good is an opinion based on uh, just the bad microphone being between the two exhaust systems, but we'll put it on there and see what it sounds like. So we're back home now, and you might be asking yourself, why in the world would you get rid of a truck with 17,000 miles on it? Well, it is five years old. The Ford Raptor was five years old. It had 17,000 miles on it, which is absolutely nothing. Um, I don't drive my pickup truck as a daily driver. I think you guys have all seen me drive around that little Honda Element that I absolutely love that car. Doesn't matter if it's raining, if it's snowing, if it's muddy, if it's dirty. That is the vehicle I always go to first. Pull it out, then I don't have to worry about getting my expensive vehicle dirty or muddy or re-cleaning it. To some that may not be an option or sound kind of stupid, but for me, we bought that car years ago and that was exactly what the intention was, was to uh, have a second vehicle that we could drive around and keep our, our better vehicles clean and all that. But uh, back to why did I get a 2024 GMC? Well, I'll be honest with you. The Raptor had uh, 17,000 miles on it, which doesn't constitute any reason to sell it. It was out of warranty. So if I was to have an issue with it, um, then that would all be out of pocket. The reality is, is I didn't want to get to that point where I would have to have out of pocket money on a five-year-old vehicle. So with trading my 2018 Ford Raptor in and around $20,000 I get a brand new 2024 with an additional three-year warranty on it and uh, shouldn't have any issues with it so there's there's some reasoning some logical thinking on that and some of you might say well why didn't you sell it outright what I did was we checked what the uh, value was for trading it where you are you get the tax incentive to trade it where you're only trading based on the amount of money that you have to pay forward on top of the trade value versus selling it outright and then spending the six percent sales tax here in pennsylvania on the total amount of this truck so it was what they gave me for a trade in and what this is it was basically a complete wash so trading it in is much easier i sign the title off hand it to them they take care of all the work, nothing else needs done. If I was to sell it outright, I would have to make sure that I got the money from the person who was buying it, that uh, I had would have to go down to the notary with them, sign over the title, make sure that the check cleared. There's just, there's a lot of things that go along with selling to an individual that makes it easier in most instances to do a direct trade in. So I absolutely love this truck. It's only got uh, 63 miles on it. That was from the dealership to the drive home. And uh, hopefully if you enjoyed this video, let me know if you wanna see any more on these trucks and, and what my thoughts are. And hopefully I'll be able to give you some reviews on it later down the road. One thing that I do know is I will be able to pull a heavier trailer with this one than the Ford Raptor. Like I said in a previous video, that Ford Raptor was not meant for hauling a trailer. This particular truck is, it is, like I said, a half ton. Uh, it's around 9,000 pound payload. And uh, I can now haul a car hauling trailer. I can haul, haul Adam's dump trailer or whatever. But I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one performs. Uh, the Ford was my first Ford in, well, I guess ever since I've been buying vehicles. I've always owned a GMC or Chevrolet. So back to the uh, 25 plus years. Yes, this is my very first uh, pickup truck that was not red. So if you liked the video, give me that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let me know what you think of these uh, GMC AT4 pickup trucks. I'll see you again, thanks.